We learn the Dari language, reading, writing, and arithmetic. We want to pass on what we've learned. Otherwise, we'll have one illiterate generation after another. We have some money to keep operating at a low level, but after that, things look bleak. Peter Schwitek was one of the first German development aid workers in Afghanistan. Twenty years ago, he came from southern Germany to the Afghan capital Kabul and started up a small aid organization called Ofarin. In Dari, one of the official languages of Afghanistan, Ofarin means well done. Although he did a great deal throughout the years, his project is now threatened with closure. It really, really hurts to see what's being lost, or already has been lost. But maybe one day we can bring it back to life. Schwitek, his wife Anne-Marie, and their local co-workers have taught tens of thousands of Afghan girls how to read, write, and do arithmetic. It's an incredible success story in a country where more than 60% of the people are illiterate. To understand what their organization Ufarin does, we visit the Serekotal Mosque in a poverty-stricken neighborhood on the outskirts of Kabul. Wet, big, bracelet. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thanks a lot. Like these young pupils, Fauzia Giamudin first learned the alphabet at Ofarin. Today, she stands for the many successes that Schwitek and his Afghan partners can point to. For years, she had attended a state-run school, but her teachers could hardly read or write. The lessons were really bad. The classes were far too big and the teachers were often absent or didn't bother with the pupils. It was much better at Ofarin. The teachers really engaged with us and really looked after us. It was only when I started at Ofarin that I learned reading, writing and arithmetic. And that gave her a basis for planning a career. I'd like to study law and become a judge who treats people humanely. Ofarin has inspired countless young Afghan women to fulfill their dreams of leading an independent life. From the start, the German founder's recipe for success was to involve the clerics who are omnipresent in Afghanistan. The country doesn't only have fundamentalist Islamists who categorically reject education for girls. There are also liberal mullahs, like Obadullah Karizada from the Ministry for Religious Affairs. It is important for girls to be educated too. After all, the Quran says that it is permitted for women to be enlightened. There are some ignorant people in our society who oppose sending girls to school. But that is wrong. In my family, for example, it is no problem at all for the girls to go to school and get an education. When the fundamentalist Taliban were in power in Afghanistan, 
They restricted women's access to schooling and professions. Even now, many families scarcely permit their daughters to leave the house. Nonetheless, the German aid workers have managed to teach around 9,000 children a year the alphabet and elementary arithmetic, most of them girls. Schooling is compulsory here, but people just don't send the girls, especially when they get older. They say it's against our religion. If the school's a bit further away, the family can't keep an eye on the route that the girl has to take. And if some neighbors or relatives were to gossip that the girl had talked to young men on the way or something like that, then the family's reputation would be endangered. So they avoid that by not sending their daughter to school at all once she's reached a certain age. But even highly conservative Afghans consider lessons in the mosque acceptable. The Schwitteks took advantage of that and moved the Ofarin classes into mosques where secular schooling takes place alongside religious instruction. That is their basic concept, respecting conservative traditions without losing sight of their goal. Covering the face with a veil during lessons is actually against Ofarin's rules because it makes the pupil's pronunciation unclear and hinders facial movement. But in the case of older women, the organization allows it, understanding the fears these students may have. For years, even since the fall of the Taliban, people don't know where things are going to go from here. Will they come back? Or are we really going to move into a more modern age where everyone can read and write, and they need these skills? Or will the day come when people say, you were one of those who ran around unveiled, and you have to justify yourself to the Taliban? History has taught Afghans to be mistrustful. The prospective law student Fauzia, a successful graduate of the Ofarin schools, has chosen to face the future with optimism. Her father supports her plans to become a judge. He has two wives and 12 children and is a religious man. In his interpretation of Islam, women have rights, including the right to an education. He says he doesn't care if his views meet with disapproval from his friends and acquaintances. People sometimes make remarks and I have taken quite a lot of criticism. But ultimately it's my decision and I'm convinced I am on the right side. Women can be educated according to the laws of Islam. I'm convinced that by supporting my daughter, I'm doing the right thing. A lot of women who see I'm going to school and getting an education are envious. They say, we wish we had a father who sent us to school. The Schwitteks first came to the region in the 1970s. There were many German engineers working here at the time. Peter Schwitteck took on a job as a math professor in Kabul. Since then, Afghanistan has been a part of his life. It gets a hold of you. It's happened to lots of people who came here. They've somehow remained attached to this country for their entire lives, and that's what happened to me. In the late 1990s, the Schwitteks began to set up their school project. Since retiring, they've run it on a volunteer basis. Many of their co-workers, such as office manager Hussein Havari, have become friends. Schwitek doesn't hesitate to tell them what he thinks has gone wrong with the international mission in Afghanistan. I really think that Afghanistan has been left completely alone on the educational front. Money has been poured into the system so that they could pay their teachers, if poorly, and construct school buildings. 
but in terms of what goes on inside the classrooms, they've been completely left on their own. Now the German aid workers feel they've also been abandoned. Their girls' schools are in danger now that their main donor, the Catholic aid organization Miserior, has stopped funding Ofarin. It says Afghanistan has become too dangerous. This is the explanation they give. Miserior is increasingly seeing precarious security situations in certain countries and regions. So, like Afghanistan, which unfortunately restricts our ability to support our partners. Over the previous three and a half years, Miserior contributed more than two million euros to support the school project. Since March, Ofarin has had to finance itself. Private sponsors and small NGOs have donated around 230,000 euros. That will last until March 2019. After that, the project's future is unclear. It's a question for the policymakers, who promised the Afghans so much for the future, to give them new opportunities and so forth. Today, there's a surprise in store for the Schwitex, one that will lift their spirits somewhat. They have come to have tea with one of Ofarin's former teachers, and they're delighted at what they find here. Nagia Taijui Bazar has turned the living room of her parents' home into a classroom. Although the Schwitex can no longer pay her, she continues to teach. She says too much is at stake after so much has been achieved. Nagia wants to pass on what she has learned. I worked for Ofarin for a year. At first there was some money, very little, but enough to cover the travel to the school. Now I teach for nothing at home. I do it voluntarily because I want to. And my students, once they're able to, will do the same. Nagia is not the only one. More and more former students and teachers are continuing the lessons on their own initiative and without pay. This has led to the formation of an informal network of schools all over the Afghan capital. The Schwitex laid the foundation for this work 20 years ago. This teacher could do something else with her free time, but she teaches. There are so many times when we think, why do we do this? But then you see the children and how enthusiastic they are. Nagia and her sisters are glowing examples. They had their first educational experiences with the German organization, and now they're headed to university. <laughs> One of the sisters is still in school and wants to take the entrance exam for university. The other is already attending university and she's helping her sister prepare for the exam. What will happen when Ofarin's funding runs out can be seen in this mosque. Mullah Mukhtar, who is in charge of the Quran classes here, says it's a shame that Ofarin will soon have to end its secular school program. He only has money for religious instruction. Instead of learning to read, write, and do math, the children will learn the Quran by heart and recite the surahs in Arabic, a language they don't even understand. If the aid from Ofarin stops, we will not be able to replace it. 
The children will not learn math or language. They won't be able to develop further. Offer it needs to be funded as it used to be in order to continue. If that support stops, it will cause a lot of damage. And these children will lose out in a country that has lost so much. Without an education, they have fewer opportunities for the future. And that can make them more vulnerable targets for extremist recruiters. Armed with an education, they are less likely to be pressed into war. There has been war in Afghanistan for more than 40 years. That has made all areas of life difficult. The economy is weak, and that makes the help from Europe, and Germany in particular, so important. Without this aid, nothing would be possible. The Shviteks have paid a personal price for their life in Afghanistan. Kabul is a dangerous city. For security reasons, they change cars frequently. Things that are normal in European cities, like taking a walk or going to shop at a market, are not possible for them here. The house where the German couple lives also serves as the office for Ofarin. The compound is the center of their lives. Taking walks or exercise has to take place behind the protection of the high walls. If I went walking like this on the street at the same time every day, then sooner or later word would get around. A foreigner would be easy prey for some people trying to make money by kidnapping someone. Is it possible to feel at home when you're constantly at risk of being kidnapped or the target of an attack? I wouldn't say Afghanistan is our home, maybe our second home. But our first home, our homeland, is Germany. That first home is the tranquil village of Randasaka near Würzburg in central Germany. The Schwitteks spend the summers here. The contrast to Kabul could not be greater. Every summer when they return to Germany for one or two months, they realize what they've been missing. We have grandchildren here, two and four years old. There's a lot to cherish here. There's the rule of law, the police, things like that. We could be happy that we have all that here. Anne-Marie and Peter Schwitek try to relax and enjoy themselves when they're here. But especially in view of current developments in Germany, they can't understand why their main sponsor, Miserior, is unwilling to continue funding their school project. The migration crisis has brought so many Afghans to Europe, simply because they have no opportunities back home. So people say, we have to do something in that country to give them opportunities, create hope, and so forth. But that's exactly what we do. And if they turn off the lights now, it will achieve the opposite. The aid workers recently approached the German Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development to find more funding for their project, to no avail. Their small house in Randasaka is full of souvenirs of Afghanistan. They include a photo album from the 1970s, a period in Afghanistan that few people recall today, a brief interlude without unrest and war. That was when the Schwitek's love affair with Afghanistan began. Mm -hmm. 
Today, many of their friends wish their relationship with Afghanistan would end sooner rather than later. Certainly a lot of them, and not just our children, but also our friends and relatives, say, can't you finally stop? But the couple have no intention of doing that just yet. Instead, they're packing their bags to return to that second home which occupies such a big place in their lives. Back in Afghanistan, the Shviteks are taking an arduous journey to the countryside. The Panjshir Valley is an area of great beauty in the largely barren landscape. Unlike many other development workers who hardly ever leave their well-guarded homes in Kabul, the Shviteks have often traveled throughout the country and continue to do so. That is not without risks, but they're helped by their experience and excellent contacts. This is our anspruch. What we hope to do is to overcome the cultural differences that exist within Afghanistan, the divide between the city and the countryside. The conditions here are very different. Ninety percent of people in the rural areas of Afghanistan cannot read or write. The Ofarin organization runs six schools in the Panjshir Valley. There used to be more, but budget cuts forced some painful closures. Who wants to tell us something about school? She's in the School is a place where you learn to read and write and where you gain knowledge. If you learn, you can become something. If you don't learn, you can only become a goat herd or a farmer. School director Mohammed Yahya likes that answer. There are lots of problems in Panjshir. The schools don't have much capacity, there aren't enough buildings. Often we have to teach in tents. And the children have a long track to get to school. There are no hotels here. But the Shviteks are used to such sleeping arrangements on their travels through Afghanistan. Mullah Obaidullah Karizada from the Ministry of Religious Affairs is accompanying the Shviteks on their inspection trip in the countryside. They collaborate on further training for the teachers who work for Ofarin. The German aid workers hope they will somehow be able to find new financial backers and their Afghan partners hope that the increasingly vocal extremists in the country will not put an end to the project. I was insulted on Facebook for working together with Ofarin. We declared on Facebook that the Taliban follow a militant interpretation of Islam. They are a wild and bestial group that has nothing to do with true Islam. Killing people is simply wrong. And that applies to Muslims and non-Muslims, to women and men. The remaining foreign aid workers face enormous problems here. 
But they feel they have made promises to the Afghan people. And in their quiet way, the Shwiteks intend to keep those promises. We still have some hope, so we're not being defeatist and just waiting for it all to end. I think we have a chance. And when you look at what's been achieved, we have earned that chance. Not our organization, but rather the children.